11 2. Um, what kind of shape is this thing right here? Trapezoid. trapezoid. So we're going to find the area of a trapezoid. All right, so we're going to do the area of a trapezoid. Well, we've already learned about trapezoids way back when, didn't we? When we did that parallelogram chapter. Um, what do we know? We know that these two sides are what to each other? Uh, parallel. parallel to each other. So trapezoid has exactly one pair of opposite sides that are parallel. That means the other two sides cannot be parallel, right? We call the two parallel sides the bases. Do you remember that? All right. So I'll tell you what. Let's do this. I did this in the last class. Let's do that in here. I don't know if this is, helps or not. We'll see if it does. But watch this. A trapezoid is pretty close to a triangle. It's kind of like a triangle. People look at it as a triangle. It's got four sides. Triangle's got three sides. How's that even close to a triangle? Well, I'll show you. Watch. If I took this side right here and like extended it up a little bit. Oops. Extend up a little bit more. And I took this side right here and I extended that just straight out like that. And let's make this so they touch. Oh, goodness. Let's try this again. All right, so there you go. So all I did was extend this side and this side, and it turned into a nice triangle, didn't it? Okay, now how do we find the area of a triangle? We learned this yesterday. Right, so the area of a triangle is just the base times the height divided by 2. Okay, that's a triangle, the area of a triangle. A trapezoid is kind of close to a triangle. It even starts with the same letter, doesn't it? even has the first same two letters. Um, a lot of things are similar about trapezoids and triangles. It's kind of a trapezoid is kind of like a triangle, but I cut it boom, right here, cut it fl flatten off the top of it, right? So that's kind of what a triangle is. So let's go back to how we had this earlier. Let's pay attention, please. Let's stop all the comments, man. It's not the comedy hour in here. I wish it was because maybe the comments would be funnier because they're not really all that funny. What? This is Norris told me to tell you something else. Yeah, I know. Oh, did someone already ruin it? Yep. Oh! It was Zach Flynn. What? Yeah, Zach ass? came in. Zach came in last period. Like, if you're in the dumb class, you can't even do that. It's not even right. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's, let's pay attention. So now we're back to a trapezoid, not a triangle. But remember this. What was the area of a trapezoid? It was a base times the height divided by two. A triangle only has one base. But what does a trapezoid have? Two bases. This is one base. We'll call this base one. This is another base. We'll call this base two. Now look, the area of a trapezoid, the area of a trapezoid is really, really close to the area of a triangle with one difference. It's a pretty big difference, but it's a difference. Then instead of having one base, it's got what? It's got two bases. So it starts off the same exact way. It's one half. It's not just the base because how many does it have? What, are we gonna, what do you think we're going to do to those two? We're going to add them up. Right. B1 plus B2. Good. Times what? Times the height. So that right there is the formula for the area of a trapezoid. Right? So it's really not that much of a stretch, is it, to remember that uh, formula right there? Don't do that. Don't do that. Just add up the two numbers, okay? Well, making it, it sure it is, but you're making it complicated. All right, if you know the two bases, you just add them up. Don't distribute the one half, all right? Unless you don't know one of the bases, then you may have to do that. But we'll we'll look at it. Where's the height though? Is this side right here the height? No, is this side right here? here? Yeah, you could go anywhere on top. It doesn't matter where on top. Uh, what yellow? It could be anywhere on top. Let's just start from here. I always like to start from the corners. It doesn't have to be at that corner. But a lot of times it's helpful to write the height at a corner because it you form a nice little triangle here. Sometimes that's helpful. Who knows? But look, this right there is the height. Okay? Again, it's perpendicular, just like we've always talked about the height, right? Altitude and height, kind of the same thing. It's always perpendicular to the base. It's perpendicular to both bases. I don't know if you remember, but we had a theorem that said if you have a... Um, if you have a line that's perpendicular to one parallel line, it's going to be perpendicular to the other parallel line as well. All right? So if it's perpendicular to this one, it also has to be perpendicular to this one. That's one of our theorems or postulates. I forget which one it was. It was way back when we start when we were talking about triangles back then. Okay? Taking good notes, are you? Okay. Alright, so that's the area of a trapezoid. It's not too hard, is it? Let's look for an example. All right, here you go. This is actually a trapezoid right here. 
isn't it? It's four sides. This side right here is parallel to this side right here. They actually need to put this in here to make sure. Okay, so look, this is parallel to this. This side right here is not parallel to this side right here, so it's definitely a trapezoid, isn't it? So if I wanted to find the area of this trapezoid, I would have to do what? First of all, find the height. What's the height of this trapezoid? It's four. It's four, right. Okay, because look, if 10 was my base, right, because I got two bases. The two parallel lines are your bases. This is one base right here. The other base, don't know what it is. Call it X. So I need to know both of those bases right there. I don't know one of them. I know one, but I don't know the other. But I do know the height. Okay? Everybody with me on this? And let's see what else. Is that all they give me? Yeah, it's all they give me. So what do you think? I have an idea. What? Okay. Okay. So you know where the X and the 8.5, like the upper Right here. Table, if you draw a line straight across from this okay. to the other side, okay. wouldn't that make a square? Because the opposite angles are congruent. Would it make it a square? Yeah, because rectangle. Because the opposite angles You don't know if it's a square or not. Oh, sheesh. Never mind. My it is a rectangle. Right. You're right. It is a parallelogram. It is a rectangle. It's definitely a rectangle. Okay, does that help you find this? Like a triangle. What do you think? Yeah, we do have a triangle up here. That's good, too. What about that blue line? What's the length of that blue line? Four. It's four, right? Because it's the same as this. All right, so that's the height, isn't it? Again, what are we trying to find? We're trying to find x, right? Or think about this. Find this length right here. Guys. You do, like, Pythagorean theorem. You could do, like, 8.5 squared equals 4 squared plus. Or... So what are we going to do? We're going to find this, right? Yeah. We'll call that y right there. Yeah, because this whole thing is 10, right? Yeah. From there to there. What you get from 10 exactly, to find this. Yep, and you're good to go. So let's do it. Let's do Pythagorean theorem. So let's solve for y. So it's going to be y squared plus 4 squared equals 8.5 squared. Mm -hmm. Stick that in there. I think it comes out kind of nice. What you get when you... Did you get that? I thought you were punching that in. It's 8.5 squared <laughs> minus 4 squared, or 16, and then that's that, and hit the square root, right, of that. Okay, good. So y is 7.5. So that's what this is right there. It's 7.5. So this part right here is going to be what? 2.5, which is the same thing as x. So now look what I have. Now I know my two bases, I know my height, now I should be able to find the whole entire thing. So area equals one half. The two bases added up. What are my two bases? One is 10 and the other is 2.5 times the what? Times the height, which is 4. Right? Chuck all those in there. Let's see if we can do this in our head. Watch. Half of 4 is what? 2. And then this is 12.5. What's 12.5 times 2? If I double 12.5. If I double 12.5, 25, right? So the area is 25. Whatever it is, let's say it's inches. Inches what? Squared. <laughs> Make sense? Here's another way you could do this. Watch. You could have done the, um, the formula for a trapezoid, or you could have split it up into two different figures, right? A triangle and a rectangle, which we already did. Let's just find this triangle right here. If I find the triangle, it's one-half the base times the height, isn't it? So it's one half the base times the height. Let's do that. Half of four is two. Two times 7.5 is 15. So the area of this triangle is 15. What about the rectangle? It's what? It's 2.5 times four, right? So if I double 2.5, that's what? Five. Double that again, that'll give you times four, that'll give you 10. Yeah, but I'm saying, pretending we didn't know the whole area, okay? Right. So, look, I got 15 and I got 10, so what's the whole thing? It's 25, isn't it? So I could do that two different ways, right? Some people would rather just split it up and not worry about the trapezoid. Um, but it kind of shows you that the trapezoid formula actually does work, though, doesn't it? All right? So that's kind of a nice thing to do. All right, let's do one more thing. We did the area of a trapezoid. On the next one, the next one's kind of cool because we're going to find the area of two different other figures, um, but it's the same exact formula for both figures. That's kind of nice, isn't it? All right, here it is. Here's the two pictures. You guys already said it. What's this? Alex, what would you say? 
This is a kite right here. I thought I thought somebody did over there. What's this thing right here? Yeah, you don't really know until I do that. But if I did that, what is it now? This is a rhombus. It's a rhombus. It's one rhombus. Two rhombi. One rhombus. All right, here's the formula. Ready? Actually, let's do this. I did this in my... Yes, yeah, so it would be. Watch, well, in my other class, I made these two different colors, and I think that was a good idea, so I'll stick with that. Okay, I'll make that one blue. What color do you want this one? Orange. Orange? Yep. Ew, I don't like orange. Okay, that looks good. All right, now watch. Here we go. These things right here that go from one corner to the other, everybody see this? If I go from one corner to the other, these are called the diagonals of the kite. All right, here's the formula. Actually, I'll tell you what. Let's do this first of all. Let's draw, we, we can also draw diagonals of a rhombus, can't we? And let's check, get this color. Now, on a rhombus, we do know something about the diagonals, that they're perpendicular. Same thing with a kite. On the diagonals of a kite are also perpendicular. So you can see there's definitely similarities between the diagonals of a kite and the diagonals of a rhombus. The diagonals of a rhombus are not necessarily equal to each other, are they? Okay, on a rectangle, they would be. But just on any old rhombus, they're not. Okay, they do bisect opposite angles and all that kind of stuff. But I just want you to see that these two aren't necessarily equal to each other. But let me give you the uh, formula. Let me give you the formula for the area of both of these. Again, it starts off with that one half again. I'm not going to go through and show you why the formula is the way it is because I don't even know if I could do that. But I'm just giving you the formula. Remember, these are two different diagonals, two different lengths. So we'll call one diagonal D1. And we'll call the other one what? D2. D2. All right? And there it is. It's really simple. So you just take the two diagonals, multiply them together, take half of that, and you've got the area of that kite. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? All right? So you've got a rhombus. You've got a kite. It's the same exact rule for both of these. And that's always nice. It's nice to double them up if we can. Can't always do that, but in this situation, you can. All right? We good with that? Yeah. I don't. I don't even think we even need an example for this. I think you're. I think you're good with this kind of stuff. All right. That's it. Let me give you some work to do. All right. Here we go. Here's some work for you. It's section eleven two. Write this down, please, so I don't have to keep it up for half an hour. Page is seven 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 eight. Eight to twenty one. What? All right, there it is. Section eleven two. We're doing eight to twenty one. All right, that's it. Have it done for tomorrow.